Oh, everybody's anticipating earthly food as well as the spiritual. Amen. What one of the uh, ministers that I uh, study. When you say study, that doesn't mean necessarily you read after, because there's not a whole lot to read after concerning what he wrote. But I study his life and his ministry. One of the things that he commonly did, he always carried a little New Testament in, in his uh, vest pocket. You know, that was he lived in the early part of the uh, last century, and and uh, you know, so oftentimes you wore a vest, not necessarily a coat. Maybe he had a coat on, but. But even when you took your coat off, your vest was still on. And so he would keep a little New Testament in his vest. And oftentimes after the meal, he would open up his little New Testament and he said, we've fed our earthly bodies, now let's feed our spiritual bodies. And, you know, uh, I like what another minister said. He said, uh, a lot of times, you know, we'll give our bodies whatever it wants and then we give our spiritual body one little cold meal a week. I don't think my meals are cold, but you understand what I'm saying by that. (laughs) Hallelujah. So Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And then you notice I put in your notes a different translation. It says it this way, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, who grants us every spiritual blessing in these heavenly realms where we live. Did you hear that? In these heavenly realms where we live. You know, we, we are so consumed oftentimes with the earthly realm, we don't realize that we also live in the heavenly realm. Amen? The Bible says that we are seated with Him in the heavenlies. Amen? So, we, He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms where we live in the anointed, not because of anything we have done, but because of what He has done for us. Father God, we thank You for Your Word this morning. Lord, thank You for the truth that You give to us. Your Word is truth. So Lord, we receive from you this morning. Lord, we say that our hearts are open wide to hear. Holy Spirit, speak to us in the ways that we need to hear. Lord, I pray that everyone will receive a word of revelation this morning. Grant it to us, Lord, and all who agree, say amen. Amen. So we've been looking at destiny and uh, you see the title this morning is Unto Us. Destiny is that which determines events. So we, would, we, we are going to look at the life, of, or some of the life, and the birth, and some of the little bit of the life of Jesus this morning. And we need to understand this, that because He followed His destiny, we can follow Him in our destiny that He has made for us. Amen. He followed His destiny. And, and the way that Jesus followed his destiny is the same way that we follow after him in our destiny. He came to this earth, he was born as a child. Is that right? You know, we all know the Christmas story that, you know, he was born, he was born in a stable and then he was laid in a manger and, and he was wrapped in swaddling cloths, which is not a pretty sight, if you know what that really means. He was, he, was, he was wrapped in the cloths that he was born in, because that's all they had. And the manger, if you don't know what that is, that's the stall that the, you know, the trough that the animals eat out. That's not a real nice, pretty little thing. It's a, you know, made out of wood. It's probably been chewed on a little bit, and maybe had some straw in it or something to make it a little softer. But other than that, you know, that's not the place you would want to think of laying your baby, right? How many of you thought, well, I can have my baby. Well, we'll put a manger in here and let him lay in that. Nope. <laughs> that wasn't the thought that came to mind. So, and Jesus grew up as a human being. You know, he was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. And because he was 100% man, he had to learn the same way that we do. 
He had to learn about his father, who his father was, that his father was, you know, the God of heaven and earth. He had to learn what his mission was, and then he followed that, and because he did, it gives us the hope that we can. Because he did, it gives us the hope that we can. Amen. So, uh, so the life of Jesus demonstrates how God's destiny works in our lives. So, if you'll go to uh, Romans chapter 8, please. So Jesus, the Bible says, and we're going to look at this scripture. I always like to give scripture for things, if I can. Romans 8, 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate. There's that destiny word, right? He did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, the story, the birth and, and the life, the story of Jesus is destiny, or you could let's say it more accurately, it is the destiny of God in action. The destiny of God in action in Jesus' life. So, we who give our lives to him also have the same opportunity to live our lives in God's will. You know, uh, when, whenever, whenever we say, you know, there's a lot of sayings that swirl around the church. And a lot of the sayings that swirl around the church are really not biblical, they're just religious sounding. Okay? You know, uh, the, you know, the, the, the thing of God is, you know, we, we don't know the will of God because He's so wonderful and magnificent and, and He's always doing wonders among us, but we don't really know what He's doing. Well, why would He do it if He doesn't, if we don't know what He's doing? Amen? We need to understand that we can live in His will. Because if, if Jesus is, if Jesus is our model, then He is, is that right? If Jesus is our, is our model and he showed how life can be lived, then we can also model after him or, or imitate him and follow after him and live in the will of God for our lives. The will of God for my life is not the same as, as the will of God for Pam's life or Ricky's life or Carla's life or anybody else's life. We all have our individual role upon the earth. But we can know it and we can live it. Amen. That was kind of weak. <laughs> Amen. Before we go any farther, I want to do this. Let's do this real quick. Like I just, you know, it's present time. Can you help me out, Ricky? Oh, Ricky will help me. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Just hang on to that for be strong. Wow. <laughs> All right. Cooper. Real quick light. Merry Christmas. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, this is what I want you all to do. I'm going to I'm going to bring them to you. Is that okay? Because if we try to wander wander around too much, I mean if get everybody up and down, that'll be hard to do. So everybody gets a present. Oop. Candy fell off. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yes. Where are we? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, don't fall out of there. Merry Christmas. Try to tuck the candy back in. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas. Okay.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let's go around this way. One, two. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. What's that? Do I get one? No. No. <laughs> oh, we got them. We got everybody? Did, did you get one? Okay. Everybody got one? I got one. Let's open our presents. <laughs> yes. When was the last time you went to church and you got a Christmas present? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. According to Pam, this is the book that changed her life. So that's that's our our gift to you, and we pray that you will use it in helping you to follow your destiny. Amen? And we have more here if you want to gift, if you want to gift someone, we have them up here in the box, so when, you know, we get to the end of the service, we can take care of that. Hallelujah. Okay. Back into the Word of God. You can read the books later. <laughs> I'm just like you. I want to know what's in there, you know. So let's go over to uh, Genesis chapter 3, please. Thank you, Ricky. Things, things don't get done without help. Hallelujah. So in, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, this is right after Adam and Eve had gotten in trouble, God spoke unto the earth the first time His plan to reveal destiny to us. Isn't it wonderful that immediately after mankind got in trouble, God said, I'm going to fix it. Immediately, he didn't wait around for, you know, he didn't stew on it for a few weeks. And, you know, that Adam and Eve, I told them what to do. I told them not to eat of that tree. I told them to stay away from there. And now look what they went and did. Well, I'm just going to avoid them for a while. <laughs> oh, I'm just, you know, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. You know, I, I believe that when God came down and Adam and Eve were hiding. Now, they, you know, you can't hide from God. But when, he, when they were hiding from Him and He said, Where are you? Now, he could, have said, he could have said, I know where you're at. He gave them the chance. In saying, Where are you? He was trying to give them the chance to say, God, we messed up. And, you know, thank God because of Jesus and His love for us and what we understand what He did for us. Because of that, we are willing to say now, Lord, I messed up. Right? Hallelujah. But God also made a promise. He's promised that there would be something coming into the world that would fix this situation. So, he said this. 
I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He was, you know, he was speaking to the serpent, and he was telling him, this is what's going to happen now because of what you did. I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So, and we're not going to turn there, but if you want to write this down, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, the Bible says that it was foreordained that Jesus would be uh, our sacrifice, that he would shed his blood for us. Foreordained before the foundation of the earth. So that means that before God ever spoke the earth into existence, set the sun, the moon, and the stars in, into their places, and, and created the orbits and all the things that make up the galaxies in the universe, that they had already decided that Jesus was going to come to the earth because man was going to grab something that didn't belong to him and they were going to have to fix it. Isn't that wonderful? So, so the destiny was laid out beforehand. But like I said, Jesus had to discover what his destiny was. So if you'll go to Isaiah chapter 9, please. Jesus discovered the same way we do. He discovered by the word and through the Spirit. Say, by the Word, by the word. And, through the Spirit. and through the Spirit. We discover our destiny the same way Jesus did. He discovered it by the Word and through the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God ministered to him from the time he was a child. And we'll look at some scripture to prove that. But Jesus had to, he would read. Would, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing? And you need to do this too. When Jesus was reading, he'd go, he would read these prophecies and he'd go, oh, that's me. Now, they weren't all wonderful prophecies. Some of them were like, ooh, boy. But you know, whenever you see the things that God has done for you in the Bible and the things that God wants us to do for Him in the Bible, you need to say, ooh, that's me. Amen. So he's, you know, he would... They didn't have, you know, books back then. They had scrolls. But can you imagine Jesus rolling out the scroll and he's reading along and he's reading down through Isaiah and he gets to chapter 9 and he's reading through it and he gets to verse 6 and it says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And he said, Ooh, that's me. You will only follow in your destiny when you see who you are in the Word of God. Ooh, that's me. So when mankind fell, God spoke to them and he, pro he made a promise to them. And then in Isaiah, Isaiah was written about six or seven hundred years before Jesus was even born. Prophecy. And so Jesus is reading this and he discovers something. Now if you'll back up a couple of pages, or a page or so, depending on how your Bible is written, to Isaiah chapter 7. In verse 14, I like to picture Jesus reading down and he sees this. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Isn't it wonderful when God gives us a sign? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And Jesus looked at that and he said, That's me. My mother is the only virgin birth that's ever been recorded in history. That's me. And that's my name, Emmanuel, God with us. That's who I am. I'm God with the people. Amen. And, and then, you know, uh, you have in your notes, and we're not going to turn there because we're going to try to get through this, but you see that the, the revelation of that was brought to pass in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, and Luke 1, 27. 
So when Jesus was born into this world, he already embodied the will of God for us. It was already in him. When you were created, see, a lot of times people think, well, you know, we, there's something that happened with between parents. Yeah, that happens all right, but then we were created. Without the spark of life from God, there is no creation of a human being. Let me say that again. Without the spark of life from God, there is no creation of a human being. Because creation begins with the Spirit. Amen. So God has to put that spark of life into us so that we can be who we are designed to be. You know, the Bible says about man that, that you know, in the psalmist, he looked up and he said, you know, I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. What does that mean? Not We're not scaredy cats. It means that what God did was so awesome, so unique, so wonderful, that you can only look at another human being if you understand the intent of God. You can only look at another human being and say, wow, that's awesome. That is a creation of God. No wonder God doesn't like wars and fighting and abortion, yes. All the things that hurt and destroy humanity. Because every time we hurt and destroy humanity, we hurt and destroy the love of God. Because we are created in love. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at the next verse. It says, Butter and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Butter and honey are types of the word of God. Butter and honey he shall eat. So as Jesus was growing up, he was eating the butter, eating the honey of the word of God. Another, you know, you remember what they said about Jesus? When, when he was in the temple, we'll look, we'll, if we get the chance, we'll see it. <laughs> because we're cut. That, that they were astounded at the things that came out of that 12 year old boy. Well, it's because as soon as he was able to read, he was, he was devouring the butter and the honey of the Word of God. Have you noticed that butter and honey, that butter is smooth and honey is sweet? Butter is smooth and honey is sweet. And, and it says that they marveled at the gracious words that came out of his mouth because it was smooth and sweet. And what Jesus did is when he traveled through the Word of God, and you need to do this also, when he traveled through the Word of God and he was discovering who he was and what his destiny was, he was also discovering the love and the, and the grace that God has towards human beings. He was, he was discovering the wonderful things that God wants to do with us and for us. He was discovering all the wonderful things that, that his Father had intended for man when he set his man upon the earth. And he said, he had to have said somewhere along the line, Father, we have to restore this relationship. Because they're outside of it. They don't understand grace. They're trying to live in the law. And the law never pleases God. All it does is show us what we did wrong. Say amen. So Jesus looked through the Word, and so when you look into the Word, you need to find out the grace of God towards you. You need to find the butter and the honey, the, the smooth and the sweet that God has towards you. And what does that mean? And how do I take this smooth and sweet that God has given to me? And how do I, and take this and give it to other people that are just they're just dried up and, and, and they don't have this they don't have anything smooth going on in their life. And there's nothing sweet about their lives and, and they're just they're just longing for something. Every human being wants to be loved. 
It's the cry in the heart of every human being, whether they know God or not. They want to be loved. And one of the main reasons why we want to go to heaven is we know that there will be nothing in the way when we get there. That free flow of love will be just there all the time towards us. Why do we need to wait till then? People need it now. Amen? So go over to Luke chapter 2, please. So the reason why we will know the difference between good and evil is the same reason why Jesus did. You know, the only time Jesus quoted the laws when people asked him, what does the law say? You ever notice that? If you read through his ministry, it's when they came and they would come and ask him, what does, what does the law say? He would say, well, it says this. But the rest of the time, he spoke of grace. Amen? He knew what it said, but he knew the difference between good and evil. If we study, if we spend time looking for who God is to us, we will know the difference between good and evil. Sometimes good and evil isn't always what we think. That's true. You know, before you came to know God, a lot of things you thought were good were really evil. And if you didn't, and if you haven't learned to deal with the judgment side of your life, you still think there's some things that are good and they're really evil. Because God loves every human being. He wants everybody to come into the knowledge of truth. Amen? And if we tell everybody what a louse they are, they're going to think God is mean. And God just waiting for a chance to drop the hammer on us. And that's not the truth at all. God is looking for opportunity to bless us. And you need to understand this also. The main way that God blesses somebody else is with you. Say, I'm a blessing. Some of you are thinking, I'm a blessing in disguise. Well, take it off. <laughs> Let people recognize what's going on. Amen? So, in Luke chapter 2 and verse 40, it says, The, bio, uh, the child grew, grew and waxed strong in spirit and filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So, the spirit and the word is how Jesus learned, right? So, the spirit... As we grow in the Lord, we are going to wax strong in the Spirit. Are you listening to me? As we grow in the Lord, we are going to wax strong in the Spirit. We are going to be filled with wisdom, and the grace of God is going to be upon us just like it was Jesus. So then, you know, we know the story here. We could read down through it, but I, I just want to point out something in particular to you. Let's go to verse 48. It says, And when they saw him, they were amazed. They were amazed at what he was doing. Remember, he was sitting there with the scholars, and they were asking him questions. And he was answering their questions, and they were astounded at the wisdom that he had. The wisdom that he had. A lot of people have knowledge. Jesus had wisdom. Amen. They were astounded at the wisdom that he had. And so he says, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? <laughs> Thus dealt with us. In other words, what are you doing? Behold, thy father and I have sought after thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, Now listen to this. Truth doesn't, go, doesn't come to you because you live in the same house. He said unto them, How is it that you sought me? What do you mean you're looking? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? 
Now, I don't know if that made a whole lot of sense to Joseph, but it should have meant a lot to Mary. What do you guys, what do you mean you're looking around all over the place? Didn't you know I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Why didn't the Son of God, who already knew who he was, who already knew his destiny, because he was astounding the scholars of that day, he was revealing truth to them that they had no idea was contained within the Scriptures. He was, he was showing them things that they had no idea belonged in there. And already, so he already knew who he was and what he was supposed to do. And that's why he said, then you know I should be about my father's business. So he already knew his destiny. He knew what he was doing upon the earth. And he also knew that it wasn't the time for him to be released yet. Okay? And the Bible says that he that he went, you know, that he went back with them and he became subject to them. In other words, he treated them as his parents. He allowed them to speak into his life and son do this and son don't do that. And all you know how parents do, right? Most of us are parents. We know how that goes. Why would he do that? already knowing what he has. Some of you aren't going to like this. Until you learn to sit under, you're not going to go up. You understand what I mean by that? Until you learn to sit under, in other words, subject your, say, okay, Lord, this man or woman of God has things to impart to me, and I'm going to sit under to them. I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to let them, you know, I'm, I'm going to serve them in whatever way I can. And until that stuff comes to me, Lord, I'm happy to do what I'm doing. When the time comes, I know I'll be released. When I first understood what God wanted to do with my life, and my life is not your life, but when I understood what God, you know, had, had a pretty good inkling of what God wanted to do with me, in other words, He wanted me to preach, I was like a racehorse at the gate. You can ask my wife. I was, want, I was wanting to do everything. And she's like, calm down. <laughs> I was I want to do this. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there and I want to do this and I want to do that. And she's like, calm down, calm down. I would sit under ministers sometimes and I'd think, you know, okay, 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 let's get going. Have you ever done that? <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Just turn me loose now. They don't turn you loose anyway. He does. Say amen. So Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. We increase the same way. This gives us hope because the same Bible and the same spirit that Jesus was being ministered to also ministers to us. He was given to show us the way. Okay? So we need to know who we are 